your work, whatever you're doing was censored, prohibited, squashed in whatever fashion, there are now at what I can tell to be countless other individuals who have caught on and are doing their own part in this. So to, to imagine there being this like, <laughs> this kind of conspiratory, you know, this sort of a uh, conspiracy theory, like thing that's trying to, you know, murder scientists and murder, and that may exist, who knows, but you know, it, it seems to be well beyond their ability to, to squash at this point. And so my, I guess what I'm maybe not afraid of, but what, what I kind of, and worried about potentially is that if if people begin to move away from to say they, they, they say they stop purchasing food from this large-scale monoculture agricultural system and that money or their their support starts going towards local farmers that are using regenerative farming practices um do you sense that potentially there could be some I, I mean you know as you mentioned that all they need to do is instill doubt in people and i've seen that happen across multiple uh industries multiple uh, segments of our economy and and, and of our, our uh, broader society um whether it's like the tobacco industry or whether it's talking about climate change or you know any of these subjects that are really important but all what I see is that certain industries are very invested in the, the the current paradigm that they are in now, and so they what they need to what they do is they just essentially spin doubt, and they say, well, maybe we know that, but maybe we don't. Do you feel that that's the case? That could be the case with with these sort of grassroots regenerative agricultural projects that are that are springing up all around the world. Oh, absolutely. That's uh, yeah. That's just standard policy at this point. So yeah. Um, you know what, at the end of the day, God, I mean, we like to think that science is somehow devoid of belief systems and opinions, mm. and that's simply not true, right? <laughs> um, that, I mean, yeah, if, if science is correctly conducted and interpreted, then it should be fairly objective, but this even the questions that we ask are, are informed by our, our belief systems. Mm. So yeah. if you want to believe the conventional agriculture is the way to go, you know, this monoculture agro input uh, intensive um, approach is the way to go. There is countless studies that says that you're right. Mm. And, and, but if you are somebody that wants to see a change otherwise, going a more regenerative route, then we're generating the science so that that'll hopefully help you out. And at the end of the day, you know, societal pressures are going to are going to prevail. And um, and if we don't have topsoil anymore, we're not going to be farming conventionally for very much longer. That's absolutely true. Um so to, I want to break down what you're doing. Um, so, so people that are listening, they may may or may not know what regenerative agriculture looks like. Um, what does that mean to you, and what how how can people even conceptualize monoculture crop production versus regenerative farming practices? What are the differences between those two? Hmm. Um, well, so regenerative uh, agriculture um, focuses on uh, cr improving soil health and, and conserving biodiversity. Those are, those are, it's kind of a change in the mindset. Rather than focusing just on profits mm -hmm. and yields, um, more often yields than profits in, in modern agriculture, by focusing on soil health and biodiversity, um, these farmers are, are more profitable and they're growing healthier food, nutrient dense food than, than, the, than the conventional mindset. And so um, I guess that that's what a regenerative agriculture is to me is, the, is it's got those four elements of conserving uh, soil and, and, um, and biodiversity while producing nutritious food profitably. Okay. Um, what does it look like? God, you know, I mean, there's no, there's, that's the thing, right? And that's what makes <laughs> this kind of difficult to nail down is that there just, there isn't, there isn't like a, 
an instruction book, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's it, I mean, it, the practices vary substantially from regenerative operation to regenerative operation, but what they're unified by is principles, and um, and these principles involve. Um, Eliminating tillage and disturbance to the soil is really important. Um, that's step one, and then um, and then getting diversity, especially in the form of plant diversity, into that operation, so that there's always soil cover, so that there's a number of different plant species in uh, in and around a particular farm in each field is really important. And then buying animals and plants. Um, and that's another source of diversity, biodiversity, um, is this, uh, is, is getting livestock out there and using that livestock as a tool. Mm. So it seems to be just a, a, uh, I, I would almost like to use the word cross pollinating effect or something where instead of trying to invasively control every element of that crop that you're trying to trying to grow you're actually integrating a whole bunch of different things together and and as a result the whole seems to benefit right yeah, yeah. i think that's a good way of putting it i mean these are stacked enterprise yeah it's a business right a farm should be a small business and right now we tend to over invest our these small farms into a very narrow suite of commodities uh, corn soybeans wheat cows um, and so these farmers end up becoming really sensitive to perturbations in the markets. And right now, crop prices are in the tank. And so agriculture and farmers are, and there's a lot of people making money off of agriculture. It's not the farmers, though. Very mm -hmm. seldom. Is that.